Kristen Moser here. Today I get to show you my latest pattern. This is Flutter by Frolic. It's constructed with four main blocks. So we have the flower blocks, there's the butterfly block, we've got a leaf unit here, and then of course the background units. So I thought I would show you how to do the flower block because it's very fun to do and it's got kind of a clever little technique to finish it. I think you'll like that. And um, I've got my strips all cut out here. Now I chose kind of a sweet palette of fabric that I shaded as it goes around. So I don't know if you can see this whole thing, but the, the whole quilt shades in color. So the flowers get darker as they go to the bottom, and then they get lighter and um, more to the yellow scale as they go out the other side. So I'm gonna use one of the pink ones to show you. Every flower has two shades. So there's six petals, three of each. So what we've got here are my two shades for one of these flowers. My center is a solid pink. So I've got that here. And then of course my background is this very fun spring green. So starting with the center cut here, I've got my strip. Now we're gonna use the large ruler for this one. All the cuts can be done with the large ruler. There's quite a few of these cuts that can be done with the small ruler or the mini ruler, but not all of them. So we're gonna use the large ruler for everything just because you can do it all with that one. So what we've got here on the large ruler is a four and a half inch white dashed hexagon line. This is not one that I use in a whole lot of things, um, but I'd like to show you how, how to use it for this one. So here we've got the four and a half inch hexagon line right through the middle here. And I'm just going to center that on my strip because what I'm going to cut is of course a four and a half inch hexagon. So I've come into this strip so that the end of the hexagon line clears the salvage edge here. I'm going to trim off the right side just, just like this. Pull the rest of the strip away. Then I'll just turn this piece around and now that fresh cut fits right into the white dashed hexagon line. So now I can trim the other, the other two sides here. Just there it is, four and a half inch hexagon. So there's six pink centers and six yellow centers in these flowers. So to continue on, I would just move down the strip, trim, trim, turn that piece around and trim the other side again. You get that idea pretty well. Okay, so now for the petals, like I said, I've got these two, these two strips that are kind of sweet pinks. And I'm just gonna go ahead and layer them up one at a time. Pretty side up, so opening the strip to a single layer, or these strips are cut, you know, only so long anyway. And then I'm gonna come off the end of the, the, the strip here with the ruler, using my diamond lines. The reason for this is I just have to take the end of the strip from a squared off end to an angled cut. So that's all I'm doing here with this first cut, is I'm just coming into the strip, I'm going to cut it off, and then move my way down the strip getting four and a half inch diamonds. So there we go, trimmed the end off. Now, pick up the ruler, slide it on in, and you don't have to turn it or anything. All I'm doing is picking up and moving it into now the four and a half inch diamond lines. So coming down from the tip of the ruler, you've got these black solid lines. That's what we're gonna use to cut. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this little tip off right while I'm here. So we need three sets like this for one flower. Take the little tip off. And one more. Okay. Now, these are all two layers, so what I'm gonna do is turn these around and just stack them up. You wanna stack them pretty precisely. You can cut them one at a time. That'd be fine too. Just to save on a little time, I'll stack them up. I've got a nice sharp blade in my cutter. All right, so back to the hexagon line. I've got my diamond here. I've got the flattened tip that I just took off down here at the bottom uh, left. And now I'm gonna take the ruler and I'm gonna lay it over the top of this cut, that four and a half inch hexagon line, I'm using it again. So it comes across the top here, down the left side, across the bottom here, and then the edge of the ruler is up this right side. And now all I'm trimming is the top right edge to create kind of a jewel shape. So that gets me the petals. 
we need some background now. So here I've got my spring green background. This this strip is just um, left folded. Selvage to selvage, two layers, that's fine. Now I'm going to cut some two and a half inch triangles. So the whole strip is two and a half inches wide. I'm using my two and a half inch triangle line here. I'm going to trim on both sides of the ruler and then turn the ruler 180 degrees. So a complete flip to get my next cut. Turn the ruler. Two and a half inch triangle line now goes across the top and the flat tip down here at the bottom. We need one of these triangles for each of the petals. So I'm just going to cut three sets now. There we go. All right. Now, when you're using triangles like this, it's really helpful to have the other tips lopped off. I am a big fan of taking those tips off because it just makes piecing so much more accurate and foolproof. So that's what I'm going to do here. I stacked up my my triangles one on top of each other and then I'm just turning the flattened tip of the ruler into those pointed triangle tips so I can just trim them off right where they need to be. So now I have a triangle with three flat tips. So the way this flower works, we're going to build petals just like this. So each color gets a triangle. So it basically turns it into a trapezoid. So I'm going to sew this on. And you see where those flat tips really help? Because now I have a perfect matchup point. I can, I can see right where my quarter inch seam is going to be. So this is great. Quarter inch seam here, press those seams open. That's going to be really nice because it'll be a very flat piece just like that. So I've actually done some of that sewing already. I know you're surprised. Let me grab those. So here you have all of your petals and you see how nice and flat that is. Sewn, pressed open, just like this. Again and again. Three in each color. And the way this goes around your around your flower just like this. So we've got the four and a half inch hexagon in the middle and then these trapezoid petal units surround it. Scoot it up. Just ta -da. So your whole flower alternates petals every other color like this. Now here's the clever trick when it comes to piecing this. We get to get this sort of spinning or swiveling look around a hexagon. How do you piece it? This is called a partial seam. So not difficult to do. It's actually a great trick because it gives you this complex look and it's so, so easy. The first seam that you're going to sew is on the top of the block here. So I'm just going to pull these off so you can get a real clear view. I would take this piece, put it down. I've got my flat tip here to match up. Now the rest of this piece just hangs off, you know, the hexagon. So the hexagon stops here and the piece just keeps going. So what we're going to do here is sew from the end, from that flattened tip, into the hexagon about two-thirds of the way across. So I'm actually going to leave myself a part of that that's unsewn, about an inch. So I'm just going to sew from here into there, do a little back stitch, that will help. Press that seam open, and then I sew on the next one. So this is piece one, and it's been sewn on partially, so I'll just scoot this up. And then piece two, it's a whole seam, so no more partial seams, it's just that first one. So the whole seam, and then the whole seam, Here's piece four, the whole seam, and then piece five, whole seam. Now piece six is a whole seam, and then to finish off seam one, you've got piece six here, and now we're going to come in and finish off seam one. So I've actually got one to show you that is at that stage. Let me grab it. Here is what it will look like when you've got the last seam to do. So you've done all your whole seams. Now we're coming back to seam one and you see how it is? So this was the last one I sewed. Pressed it open. It's very flat. Works out really well. 
So I pressed it open and now I come in and I can finish seam one. So I'm going to tip this all back. I've got my flat tip out here to match up. Those have been helping all the way around. So I'm going to start here where I had stopped and backstitched and I'm just going to go ahead and finish that seam all the way out to the end. Press that final seam open and then you'll have a completed flower block. Isn't that fun? It's so easy to do and it will make everything look so much more complicated than it is. So all of these blocks finishes large hexagons. Of course we've got 12 flowers for this whole wreath and there's two butterflies. So here's the butterfly block. You can kind of see how cute it is. It finishes large hexagons and then of course the background finishes as a large hexagon. Now those were cut from strip sets. So let me quickly show you. You've seen me do this many, many times before, so I won't bore you with the cutting, but this was a strip set before I cut it into large triangles. And so here we end up with triangles of stripes. But the nice thing is once you've cut them, you start to put these together and it creates a hexagon. This hexagon will have a dark outer edge. It's opposite, so the bottom cuts from those strip sets will have a light outer edge. That's really fun. So working together to build your background from just strip sets. And then of course you've got the leaf blocks. So that's the fourth and final block. So we have flower blocks, we have butterfly blocks, and then we have leaf blocks. So these leaf blocks are triangle units. They'll fit in here and there to kind of fill out the wreath, make it so you don't have to do any Y seams. So none of this construction involves any tedious piecing, no Y seams included, and you can turn your leaves any direction to get them to um, kind of look like they're blooming in a way. Okay, so there is that. So of course here I've got my my fabric palette and oh, before I talk about that what I should tell you is this pattern here you see the cover image is the large one so that's the one behind me that's the twin size so that is on the cover on the back cover we've got a lap size and then there's also a table runner layout in the last couple of pages so I've got those to show you here here is the table runner it's two butterflies and a flower so it's very very sweet like that. And then the lap size one is, or, or wall hanging even, is six flowers and a butterfly. So the one behind me is 12 flowers and two butterflies. And then this one is six flowers surrounding a hexagon center and one butterfly. Using the same fabric, just different backgrounds. So that's kind of cool. You can see how, how wildly different it would be. Okay, so. Of course I did fabric bundles because I loved these fabrics and working with something that got you these shades and, and the flowers to kind of um, create this ombre effect, I thought you would really like it too. So I went ahead and put together some kits. So you see, the kit includes the pattern, but I will put a link for just the pattern if you want to work with your own color scheme. But here you see what we've got here, the two background shades and then all of the colors that I used for my flowers. So the sweet pinks working their way into yellows and oranges, more of the pinks, and then the reds. And there are 13 different fabrics in all, and so they shade all the way across. And that's what we've got here on the cover. So if you like those colors, that's what you'll want. And then, of course, we've got the, the butterfly fabrics, the leaf fabrics, and the centers of the flowers. So you've got everything you need to do the whole quilt with this one. Now this kit is just for the large size. So the lap size and the table runner size, you could of course do them with the kit. You'd have a lot left over. You might even be able to get two out of the, um, the lap size and then uh, a table runner maybe two. So that would be kind of fun to do. And I will put links to everything for the kit and the, the, the pattern itself in the description box below this video. So if you like this, that's where you'll go to see it and um, I hope you found something inspiring here. Thanks for watching.